Hi right, guys, this is uh, College Algebra, Math 1513, Northern Oklahoma College, Chapter 2, Section 4. We're going to write the quadratic function in standard form, this time by using the vertex formula. Okay, vertex formula. You guys remember the quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Some of you guys even know a little song that goes along with that. Um, if you'll look right here, this negative B over 2a part, that part right there is what we're going to use for our vertex formula. All right, the vertex formula is just a quick way of finding the coordinates of the vertex. If you just calculate the negative b over 2a that I just showed you, okay, you uh, put in your a and b, work that down to a number, that gives you the x coordinate of your vertex. And your y coordinate, how do you find the y coordinate? You just take what you just got, that negative b over 2a, that number, you run it through your function and see what pops out for your y coordinate. So remember, all we're looking for is an ordered pair, an x and a y. How do we find the x? We run negative b over 2a. Uh, we run numbers through that and get a coordinate for x. Then we take that x coordinate and we run it through the function and see what it spits out for a y coordinate. And what we get is going to be the coordinates of our vertex. Once we know that, we can write our formula or rather write our equation in standard form. All right, take for instance f of x equals 3x squared plus 12x minus 7. Well, to use our vertex formula, we have to remember what a and b and c are. You guys are going to remember this here in a second. Okay, ax squared plus bx plus c. When they're in this format, my a will be the number in front of the x squared, my b will be the number in front of the x, and my c will be uh, the number out here on the end, which happens to be negative in this case. So just to make a little note here, my a is 3, my b is 12, and my c has got a minus in front of it, so it's a negative 7. All right, how to calculate our, our vertex. Okay, to calculate our vertex, our first coordinate is going to be negative b over 2a. We're going to plug in numbers here in a second comma, and then our y coordinate, instead of putting that fancy notation they have in the book, I'm just going to put a question mark for now. We're going to figure out what our y coordinate is here in a minute, but for now it's unknown. All right, uh, negative b, so negative, what's my b? 12, over 2, I'm going to use parentheses, what's my a? 3, comma, still a question mark there, we don't know what the y coordinate is yet. Okay, do the math. Negative 12 over 2 times 3, that's negative 12 over 6. That's going to wind up being a negative 2. So, so far, we know that our x-coordinate of our vertex is negative 2. We don't know what our y-coordinate will be. So, let's run the negative 2 through the original function. So, we're going to put it right back in there, run it through, and see what my y-coordinate is that matches up to negative 2. All right, so it's getting a little tight over here, but I'll just do it right here. F of negative 2. I'm going to take negative 2 and put it into the function. So what is F of negative 2? It's 3 times negative 2 squared, remember to use parentheses, plus 12 times negative 2. Oh, I really ran out of room. Minus 7. We're going to do the math, and we get F of negative 2. When you run negative 2 through the function, you're going to get 12 for that first term minus 24 for the second term, and minus 7, do some more math, f of negative 2 winds up being negative 19. Where does that go? That's our y-coordinate. So what is our vertex? I'll use v for vertex. Our x-coordinate was negative 2, and we ran negative 2 through the function to find our y-coordinate of negative 19. So our vertex is negative 2, 19. We're going to use that information to uh, write the uh, quadratic uh, function in standard form now. Okay, so we have our vertex. Remember, we call that hk, the coordinates. So our h is negative 2 and our k is negative 19. Let's use that to write the function now. Our function needs to look like this. a times x minus h squared plus k. That's what it needs to look like. <clears throat> All right, let's plug in our numbers equals a. Who remembers what a is? Go back to the start of the problem when we listed a, b, and c, and you'll see that a was 3. All right, x minus whatever our h is. What's our h? 
Look over here. That's our H. And this is our K. Our H is negative 2. So I'm going to put in a negative 2 there. And then plus, we have to add our K. What's our K? Look over here. K is negative 19. So it looks like that. Let's just clean it up a little bit. So we're basically done. We just need to make it look a little nicer. So 3... X minus negative 2 is really X plus 2. You know what? I forgot my squared up there. There's my squared. Plus negative 19 is really minus 19. And there we have it. All right. Now, of course, the book won't let it be that easy. They're going to try and uh, confuse you. They're going to try and mix it up a little bit. Remember, we need an AX squared plus a BX plus a C. That means we need an X squared term. We have that. We need a BX. That's what we're missing. We don't have an X term up above. And we need a C. We have that right there. So what we have is an X squared term and a C term. We're missing an X term. How do we uh, work that in? Well, our X squared term is right there above. Right there above. There's our X squared term. What's in front of it? A 1. So our 1 is our A. All right, plus, we don't have an X term. So how can we put an X term there that's not really there? Because I don't want to change the function. I just want to add something that's not really there. The trick is to add a 0X, okay? 0 times X, well, 0 times anything is 0. So I'm basically adding 0. Adding 0 doesn't change anything. So I can add a 0X without changing anything. And now it's fitting my, uh, fitting my formula. I have something in the x squared slot, I have something in the x uh, position, and I have something in the b in the c position. All right, let's make some notes here. Our a is 1, our b is 0, and our c, notice the negative in front of the 4, our c is negative 4. So let's calculate our vertex. All right, vertex. Well, our vertex is just negative b over 2a. And then we got to figure out what the y is later. Negative b over 2a is negative 0. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out here in a second. Over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. And we'll worry about the y coordinate in a minute. What is negative 0? Well, there's no such thing as negative 0. It's just 0. 0 doesn't have a sign. And 0 divided by anything, it doesn't matter what's on bottom. 0 divided by anything is 0. So our vertex... Our first coordinate of our vertex is zero. What's our second coordinate? What's our y coordinate? We don't know yet. We're going to have to run zero through the function, through our original function up here. We're going to run zero through that and find our, uh, our y coordinate. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. f of zero, if I take the x out and put in zero, I have zero squared minus four. So f of zero equals negative four. All right, that is our y coordinate. In fact, I'll just erase that question mark and put in a negative 4 right there. There's our vertex. So we found the vertex. Now let's write the function in the standard form. All right, here's the information we've gathered so far. We know our vertex, which we call our h and our k, is 0, negative 4. We know our a, b, and c over there. So let's write our function in standard form, a times x minus h squared plus k. All right, where's our h? There's our h, there's our k. All right, what else do we need? We need an a, there's our a right there. So let's fill in the blanks here. So f of x is a, what's a? It's one, x minus, what's our h coordinate? Our h coordinate is zero squared plus What's our k-coordinate? Our k-coordinate is negative 4. There, we're done. Let's just make it prettier. Let's clean it up. All right, inside the parentheses, x minus 0, that's just x. So I have 1 times x squared plus negative 4 is just minus 4. Clean it up just a little bit further. All right, 1 times x squared is just x squared. And then we have our minus 4. And there's our equation in standard form, which you notice didn't change anything. It was already in standard form. We just didn't know it. 
All right, and one more thing the book might throw at you is you might see an occasional fraction. Nothing to be scared of. Just uh, you know the procedure. All right, our A is 3. Our B, notice that negative, is negative 10. And our C is 2. Let's calculate our vertex. Our vertex is going to be negative B over 2A. That'll be our X coordinate. We'll figure out the Y coordinate later. So it'll be negative. What's my B? It's negative 10. So negative, negative 10. You can put parentheses there if you want to. Negative, negative 10 over 2 times our A of 3. That's our X coordinate. We don't know what our Y coordinate is yet. Do the math. Negative, negative 10 is positive 10. So the opposite of negative 10 is positive 10 over 6. You know what? I'm just going to reduce that to 5 over 3. So our x coordinate is 5 over 3. And we don't know what our y coordinate is yet. We've got to run that 5 over 3 through the function. All right, so here's what we know so far. We know our vertex, the first coordinate is 5 over 3. To find the second coordinate, we're going to have to run that 5 over 3 through the function. We're going to have to plug it in for x. So 3 times 5 over 3 squared minus 10 times 5 over 3 plus 2. Okay, the rest of it's just calculator work. Grab your calculator, see if you can get the answer. Alright, and there's what I got. Negative 19 over 3 is what we get when we run 5 over 3 through the function. So let's just erase our question mark and put in our negative 19 over 3. Okay, there's the first part of our answer, find the vertex. Now we've got to write the uh, function in standard form. All right, so we need, in standard form, we need A. Actually, let's try something new here. I'm going to need a number for A. And then I have my X minus... I'm going to need a number for h squared plus, and then I'm going to need a number for k. Maybe that'll make it a little clearer. Okay, where's my a? Right there. Where's my h? Right there. Where's my k? Right there. Let's plug them in and see what happens. So f of x equals 3, that's my a, x minus, what's my h? 5 over 3 squared plus, what's my k? negative 19 over 3. And you know that's actually ready to go. I'm just going to, instead of writing the whole thing over again, I'm going to erase plus a negative and just make it minus and call it good. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, finding the maximum or minimum value of a function uh, the most common application of this is in business. Maybe they're plotting the cost of doing business or the cost of manufacturing something, and they come up with a parabola like this, and they would like to know the point at which maybe their profit is the greatest. So they're looking for a maximum value. And in the same case, if your parabola opened downwards, they would be looking for a minimum value. All right, maximum value and minimum value. It's real easy to calculate. All you're going to do is find the vertex. All right, let's say we have a function like this. What does the A tell us? Well, it's positive, so that tells us it opens upward. What's our H and K? Well, there's our H, our 3, and there's our K, our 4. That's our vertex. So we know we have a vertex at 3, 4, 3 to the right and 4 up. And we know that it opens up. So the question would be here, is it a maximum or a minimum? Well, we're talking about a minimum. A minimum value of what? Well, what's the lowest point on that curve? The lowest point on that curve is 4. The lowest it gets is 4. After that, it'll increase. So our minimum value is 4. Oh, what about this equation right here? What about that function? Tell me if it opens up or down. Tell me what the vertex is. Tell me if we found a minimum or a maximum. All right, it looks to me like our vertex is negative 3, negative 4, 3 to the left, and 4 down. And it opens down, so we must have a maximum. And what is our maximum value? The highest that function will get is negative 4.